starting from this Saturday, the birthday of Sayyid al-Shahada alayhi salam. But since Shaban is the month of Rasulullah, peace be upon him, I will continue the discussion of last week about this great personality because the Prophet is the source of information of Ahlul Bayt. He is the center and he is the example and he is the founding father of Ahlul Bayt. Prophet Muhammad, the most popular name in the Muslim world. There is no name in the Muslim world to be mentioned billion times a day except this name. Followed with some other popular names like Ali and Hassan and Hussein. And Allah said, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ we raise your character and your name and remember us. Even in Europe and non-Muslim world, there are areas that the name Muhammad is name number one. London is one of them. Of course, there are many Muslims there and when they check the, the new babies, the highest percentage of the male babies called Muhammad, even in London, in Amsterdam, in some other areas of Europe. When we think about this personality, we really think and realize that Prophet Muhammad was a miracle in human history. A miracle. How come an orphan who never saw his father and his mom passed away when he was only six and grandfather passed away when he was only eight and he was born in Mecca, part of Arabian Peninsula. An area that was not favored even by the superpowers of the time. Neither Persian Empire nor Roman Empire were interested to add Arabia to their territory. They didn't care about that part. A very isolated area a people of pagan, paganism, only in Kaaba there were 360 idols, asna, inside the Kaaba. The culture of society, a tribal, all battles with blood and barbarism, and no sign of science and civilization at all. Isn't it a miracle a man was born in such a society, orphan, no school and education available? But this man stood up on 27th of Rajab and the day of prophethood, calling people, Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflahu. The only way of salvation for you people is to drop all the idols and to believe in one God and one authority. In Nadina and Allah Islam, I brought you a religion called Islam. I'm bringing you a book called Al Quran. لَبَجِئَتُكُمْ بِخَيْرِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ 
What is the best for you in this world and hereafter? This is what I am bringing for you. This is my mission. My mission is education for your mind, purification for your hearts, and liberation for your soul. This miraculous man said, I came to introduce the highest moral principles. Asad, Asabr, Al Ikhlas. الإحسان، العدل، السلام، العفو، الأدب، الاحترام، الأمانة، التواضع، العمل الصالح. This is the morality. These are the standards that I introduce. Honesty, sincerity, peace, justice, love, forgiveness, courtesy. Humility, respect, and righteous acts. These are part of the mission of morality of this messenger. This is وَلَا تَتَّبَعُوا السُّبُلْ فَتَفَرَّغَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ Do not follow deviation and other ways. This is my straight path. Follow this straight path. And not other wrong roads. ذَلِكُمْ وَسَاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّبُونَ What was the reaction of people of paganism in Arabia? What do you expect from Jaliyatul Jahli wal Kibri wal Fasad wal Nifaq wal Intiqam? People that they were proud to call themselves Abu Jahl. Isn't it the name Abu Jahl means the father of ignorance? And he was so happy about this name to be called Abu Jahl. Like he felt proud for that. Somebody called Abu Lahab, the father of fire. What is to be proud to be father of fire? What should be proud for somebody to be called Ibn Kal, the son of Dog? I mean, what do you expect in this society to react to the message of this man? They call him as Sahir, Al Majnoon, Al Kahin. He is crazy. He is a sorcerer. And they followed him everywhere to add to pain and persecution and pressure and insult. But it didn't work. The man was so dedicated and so determined about his mission. They asked Abu Talib to talk to his cousin and telling him that we have wealth, we have women, we have <coughs> everything that you want. Just stop. And his answer was, Wallahi law wada'u shamsa fi yamini wal qamara fi yasari ma taraktu hadha al-amr. They can put the sun on my right hand and the moon on my left hand, but I would never drop this call and this mission. Never. He is a man who introduced so many lessons to humanity, morality, and manner, and mercy, and tolerance, forgiveness, and love, even to his enemies. When he forced him to flee his city, and he went to Medina. They did not leave him alone even in Medina. 
They followed him. And they are fighting him while he is not even in Mecca anymore. <coughs> and war after war after every battle, when in Ghazwa al Uhud, in the battle of Uhud, they directly attacked the Prophet. His tooth was broken. The blood is coming while he's bleeding and he's hurt. Some of the companions are saying, Ya Rasulullah, curse them. You are the messenger of God. Say something, let God punish them. But the Prophet even said he prayed for them, not against them. He said, Allahumma hadilli qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamunu God. Forgive them. They do this because they are johal, they are just ignorant. Guide them. Even after so many years, so many years of pain and persecution, when the Prophet prepared the, the companions to put an end to the evilness and aggression of the pagans, and he decided to liberate the city of Mecca, and he did without blood, without physical fighting. Now, people are expecting, so many people, that he is going to revenge. After they did every evil thing to him and family and friends and followers of the Prophet, but we know his reaction, that famous call, Antum Antum No revenge. They said, Ya Rasulullah, but somebody like Akilatul Akbar, the hand. She was the wife of Abu Sufyan. Very evil woman. In the battle of Uhud, she was the one when she saw the body of Sayyid al-Shuhada of Uhud, Hamza, Asadullah, on the ground. She went and she cut the ear of Hamza and used it as a ne necklace. And she was so proud of this. And some of these takfiri here, they are coming from the same generation. It's the same mentality. Even this lady came to the Prophet and the Prophet forgave her. After they killed his uncle and they dismembered his body, this is the Holy Prophet. Now, sometimes we wonder, where are we as Muslims and this Prophet? Where is the Ummah? and akhlaq al nabi this morality of the Prophet. He had three social calls for the faithful. Number one, he said, al mu'minuna ikhwan. Building the bridge of brotherhood among the faithful. Then he said, wa atasabu bahablillahi jami'a wa la tafarrahu. Unity of the ummah. And the third call was Cooperate based on righteousness. Which one of these qualities now implemented in a right way among the Ummah? This is the mission of the Prophet. And then you see the mess among the Muslims. Three years of killing people, beheading people. That's the specialty of the Takfiriyun and Taliban and Al-Qaeda and other criminals. When are you going to be satisfied with the blood of the innocent? Then in Pakistan you see that one of the court was in the news. They attacked in a barbaric way and they killed a lady. She was killed by her own family because she got married without the permission of her family. I don't know the details, but if that's the case, you can see that Islam doesn't exist in this morality. 
Now I get emails and messages from interfaith about this lady in Sudan, Maria Ibrahim. They say that, well, her father was a Muslim or her mom was not or whatever. Now she married to a Christian and now she's pregnant and they put her in prison and they are saying that they are waiting for the baby to come and apparently she already delivered yesterday or today something in the news and they are saying that they are going to lash her a hundred times and then to kill her. And now the CNN is begging for them now they are talking about this. Islamophobia and Muslim phobia because of the foolishness of what is going on. They may bring some fatwas. I don't care how many fatwas among uh, Shia or Sunni or whoever about a situation like this. It does not make sense. It's not right. It doesn't give a right message about Islam and Muslim to the world. It doesn't match with the morality and justice, justice of Islam. So brothers and sisters, at least now that you and I, we have opportunity in this country to do something right, you have to take advantage of this opportunity. Those people in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, or everywhere in Iraq, in Syria, they are deprived now from so many of these opportunities. I was in this Star International Academy yesterday. They had a graduation here in Dearborn Heights. There is a lady, Nawal, Haji Nawal Hamada. She's running that organization, more than 3,000 students. Yes, there are countries that a woman is not allowed to get education. Now you see one lady, she is running an educational institution with more than 3,000 boys and girls from this community. That's an opportunity. And I so, felt so honored that in graduation yesterday, tens of those graduated from high school, they got a scholarship, 50,000, 90,000, 150,000, some of them 200,000, to be paid for their entire university and graduation. Some of them go ahead till you get your bachelor, your master, some of them PhD. The government is paying for that. This is an opportunity. Now, the same government, of course, is part of problem in those areas that they don't have these opportunities because of the problem in foreign policy. That's another thing. Well, at least not here. I was interested and impressed with so many positive things in the president speech in New York that couple of days ago, it was yesterday or day before yesterday. Especially one of the things that he said that just because we have the best hammer does not mean that every problem is a nail. That, that's a very good expression. I think this is going to last forever, this, this statement. That the solution is not just war and military everywhere. But then my criticism to the president is this, that you said in this speech that the terrorism is the biggest threat for the United States. If this is the case, why is it that our government support the policies of government like Saudis that they are the main sponsor of terrorism in the Middle East, if this is the issue? He said in this lecture that there is no military solution for Syria. The Syria problem should be solved in a diplomatic way. If you really believe in this, why is it that the United States is helping and sending weapons to some of those criminals who are fighting in Syria? He said that democracy is our best friend. Yes, we agree with that. Then why is it that in our foreign policy we are supporting so many of those dictators either in the Middle East and somewhere else? So the lectures are excellent. The announcements are excellent. 
But what we lack in this world is action. To follow this world with action. And it's not only the US president. There are so many other presidents. There are so many other le leaders in the world. They say nice things. But there is no action. We need actions, brothers and sisters, as individuals, as families, as a community, as a country, as international community. The solution for the problems is al-amal al-saleh, the right actions, not lip service. يَوْمَئِذِنْ يَسْرُ النَّاسِ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهْ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهْ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتباصوا بالحق وتباصوا بالصبر وإلى الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى للحق والمنكر